Hello everyone, this is a past year question of basic econometrics or introductory econometrics. Delhi University for students of semester 4. Let us see what the question is saying. Suppose that you are considering opening a restaurant at a location where average traffic volume is 1000 car per day. To help you decide to open the restaurant or not, you collect the data on the daily sales and average traffic volume for a random sample of 22 restaurants. So your N is 22. Remember, because N is less than 30, in case you have to do a t, I mean, you have to do a hypothesis testing, it would be a t test. Okay. You can set up your model like this. So, sales is a function of the average traffic. So, we say sales is a function. So, is beta 1 plus beta 2 average traffic plus error. Now it says obtain the ordinary least squared estimator of the slope coefficient and interpret it. So we want to estimate beta 2 hat and the formula for beta 2 hat is n submission xi yi. So you know, beta 2 can be estimated both using uh, deviation method and absolute method. I'll first write the formula using absolute method. So, n submission xi yi minus submission xi submission yi upon n submission xi square minus second submission xi square minus submission xi whole square. This is the formula of beta 2 hat. This can also be written as submission xi yi upon submission xi square where xi's and yi's are in their deviation form. Now if you notice I'm already given submission xi yi submission xi square x bar y bar so I can very well go ahead and use the formula but because I am given the mean values, there are two ways to convert, to change it. Either, you know, I can rewrite this formula by dividing numerator and denominator by n square. If I do that, what will I get? I will get n submission xi yi minus submission xi submission yi divided by n square divided by what is the denominator? n submission xi square minus submission xi whole square upon again n square. So I have divided the numerator 
and denominator by n square. So what do I get? I get submission x i y i. Just separating it. Submission x i submission y i. Since it is n square, I've written n into n here upon n submission x i square by n square minus submission x i square upon n square. So this part, just notice this, this part, I can write submission x i by n whole square, isn't it? If I tell you what is 4 square by 5 square, can you tell me it is 4 by 5 square? So it, exactly that is what I'm doing, right? So this is what I can do with it. Let's say that this is summation x by n whole square. Now it's clear this is x bar, this is y bar, this is x bar, isn't it? So you can write summation xi y i by n minus x bar y bar upon submission x i square by n minus x bar whole square. You can directly remember this formula for the point of view of exam and directly use this formula. You just have to remember this formula without deriving it also, it can be used. Now, what is summation x i y i? It's given to us 17170. So it is 17170 minus upon n. What is n? n is 22. Minus what is submission x bar y bar 22.5 into 32. So 22.5 into 32 upon submission x i square by n. So what is submission x i square? 13055. by n minus x, x bar square. What is x bar square? 22.5 whole square. So this is what you will get finally. Now you just have to solve it, right? So 17170 divided by 22 is 780.46 minus 22.5 into 32 is 720 upon 13055 divided by 22 is 593.41 minus 22.5 whole square is 506.25. Just solve for it. So this is 60.46 divided by So this is approximately 0 0.693. So I'll keep it approximate to 0 0.70. This is what your answer is. Now, once you get this answer, what is it saying? It is saying interpret the slope coefficient. So we should be interpreting it. So how do we interpret it? We can say that when average traffic increases 
by one unit, then on an average sales increase by 0 0.70 units. This is its interpretation. But what is important is to write this on an average. Sales will always increase on an average. Okay. Okay, then let's go to the next question. Now, the next question is, um, so there is one more thing that I would like to highlight here. See, here in this question, you are given that sales are in thousands of rupees. Right? And you're given that average traffic volume, this is calculated in hundreds of cars per day. Isn't it? This is given to you. So because you're given that the traffic volume is in hundreds of cars, so when we say that the traffic volume increases, then we are only mentioning that it increases in whatever units is mentioned. If the units are hundreds of car, then the average traffic volume, when it increases by 100 car, then the sale on an average will increase by 0 0.70 into 1000 rupees, right? That's the reason why the safest option is to always use the word unit. Because the moment you use this word unit now, unit becomes whatever unit is mentioned in the question. So if this unit is actually 1000 cars or 100 cars, and if this unit is in 1000 rupees, so it becomes accordingly that 1 into 100 cars and 0 into 70 sorry 7.70 into 1000 rupees so when on an average you will see the traffic increasing by 100 cars your money will increase by 700 rupees right that becomes automatically just by using the word unit then whichever unit it is in which the question is measuring you are simply going ahead and using that unit if the unit says thousand cars it is 1,000 cars. If the unit says 1,000 rupees, it is 1,000 rupees. Whatever the unit is, we are not concerned with that. Then. So in exam, the safest option, if you don't get it, is to write units. And then if you understand the question well enough, you can convert those units back into the unit which is given to us. So instead of unit, you can write 1,000 cars. And instead of unit here, you can write 1,000 rupees. But the safest option is to play with the word units. Now come to the next question.